relish it, I'll relish it to the day I die. Oh my heavens, we were just telling stories. He uh -huh. was just telling me, what was that story? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, that silly story, you know, about, about the Beaver Dam. Yeah, I can't and remember. But Jim anyway. Hammerstrom and yeah, Maureen. And, and, and yeah, all you know. that. Well, hi, welcome to Cooking Cheap. Welcome to the <laughs> yeah. program. We're going to do relishes today. Before we get into anything, I got to tell you, yeah, I collect glass. Yeah. Among many other things, but you know I collect you got that real good looking glass eye. <laughs> <laughs> this one over here, in case you can't tell, it doesn't move quite like right. this one does. Right. So, anyway, I love glass, and I want you to see this. I really, and I grew up with a lot of these. Mm -hmm. These are you, the you old. You were raised in a glass jar there for no, a while. No, 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 that isn't, that, isn't, that isn't what I mean. I, I, I was born under Adding parents. Adding pickle last week, <laughs> folks. <laughs> I was born under real parents under normal conditions. I wasn't in one of those, what do they call them? Don't kid me. Your Aunt Tootsie showed me the terrarium that you lived in the first six months of your life. Ball. <laughs> It is a ball jar. That's what I'm trying to say. This is one of the old-fashioned ones. Look at this, Laven. It's got the metal top on it. That's a zinc top. It's a top. lid or a zinc top. Zinc. And it's got the, the glass inside it. Mm -hmm. And it's got the little rubber thing around here. And it, it's sealed from the side. Look at this one. Th these are just fascinating. They really are. Mm -hmm. This one, this thing comes off. And, and the little glass top comes off. And the little rubber thing goes there. And this one, I don't know. That's just a mess. And, and this one, most of you who were canon for more than 15 years have seen one of these. Yep. And aren't they real pretty? They're they wonderful. They really are. And we won't be using any of these today. <laughs> no, because they're not safe to can in anymore. But they're pretty to look at. What do you mean they're not safe to can in anymore? Well, unless you've got the correct thing. They don't really recommend that you use the zinc top stuff anymore. The latest books. Well. But anyway, you know that that's why I set off uh, those things at the airport when yeah, I go yeah, through. That's right. I ate a lot of stuff yeah. out of these zinc You know, cans. Um, Mr. Know-it-all, that's my other name in my other life, do you know that the first product manufactured in the new world Charles Epp. was gla no, glass jars <laughs> at Jamestown, really? Virginia? Yes, sir. Well, golly, that's true. it is so nice to see men in the kitchen. <laughs> Where? <laughs> my husband does most of the cooking at our home. And he really does cook great. And, oh, by the way, I think you should use your fingers and hands in the kitchen while you're cooking. Well, darling, if I didn't use my hands in the kitchen while I was cooking, I wouldn't get much done. Love from Kathy Martin of Auburn Day, Auburn Dale, Florida. Thank you very much. It's near Lakeland down there somewhere. Thank you. And we appreciate it. And it says, P.S. I think you are both cute. Aww. All right, thank you. And Normally people just say I am, but it's nice to hear they've included Laban, and I think it's wonderful. Like. Mr. Steve Patton of Bristol, Tennessee has written, my large, well, I can't even, <laughs> he made a little joke about certain parts of my anatomy well, here. Heaven's sake. <clears throat> talking about my, well, as you can see by the paper We're I chose about to write on. <laughs> My derriere. Oh. oh okay. uh, as you can see by the paper I chose to write on, I'm a very musical person. Oh. And he's got this uh, If you played those, I wonder what it would play. See, isn't that cute? And he says, having studied organ for 15 years, by the way, you are correct. The M.P. Moeller Company is a pipe organ building company of Hagerstown, Maryland, where my uh, grandfather's from. You crazy guys keep up the good work. Now, what was that about? I have no idea. Do you reckon I, I we really got in an argument over pipe organs on I the show I don't think one we day? got into a hot pipe organ thing. <laughs> I think maybe you mispronounced knows? the name of the, the Muller spaghetti, maybe. Oh, I don't who think knows? so. I grew up with Muller spaghetti, never mispronounced it. Mr. and Mrs. Williamson of Danville, Virginia write, Dear Cooks, here is a foolproof way to keep the little bugs out of your flour corn meal and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what what they settle <laughs> on, the and they all went off onto the floor. <laughs> These bay leaves, put bay leaves in there with them. That's what to say. Oh. I know I never heard that before. No, Holiday greetings from the Williamsons of Danville, Virginia. Thank you very much. We appreciate that, mm -hmm. and and I'll I'll take good care of. Well, good. Let's get over there and do some cooking, <laughs> so that we'll get finished this week. <laughs> that was so humiliating. <laughs> ah, I just love this glass. It really is a fine glass. 
Never look at the world through green colored glass. Well, you know what they say. How old do you reckon that is? You don't know? 40. Thank you. Somebody thinks it's 40. Do I hear 50? 50. 55. Got 50. Going for 60. 60. Thank you. That's pretty. Larry, I'm going to do an apple chutney, and I've got to chop up a whole bunch of apples. So if you would like to start, I'll just show everybody that I'm going to chop up these apples. What? You're not going to chop up any fresh chutneys? <laughs> Dry well, cackle. Ha, i got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I wish we had some tape to go to today because... <laughs> For those of you that get tired of seeing us chop things, you're going to be sick of this show before it's over. You see all this stuff laying in front of me? Everything except this glass in front of me has to be chopped. And I'm going to tell you that if I was at home, I'd throw all this stuff into my food grinder, go zzzt, and it'd all be done, that'd be the end of it. But here at Cooking Cheap, we do pickles, peppers, and onions the old-fashioned way. We chop ourselves to death, and that's what we're going to do today. We're going to chop all this stuff up, and we're going to boil it for a good amount of time. We're going to show you how to put it in glass cans and what to do with it once you've done what you do. You know, Ms. So, Ford, I could use a, a paring knife at this point, and I'm going to put two cups of cider vinegar into a large pan so I can get that out of the way. A lot of people wonder, you know, go take a knife and do all this fancy stuff, these things. Believe me, the simplest way to get this thing under control is just reach in there and grab it out. And then just shake the seeds all over Johnson's foot. Shake them, shake them. <laughs> That's what I, I do. So the first no thing I'm going to do is open these things up and tear those little things out of there and get all the seeds out of there, just get those seeds to fly. Do it by hand. Don't be so delicate about it, because if you do, you'll never get this thing done. And I'm not sure we will anyway, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Do I look worried? Now, this no, is, this is gonna it. take about um, six cups each. No, six cups of finely chopped onions and three cups each of red bell peppers and green bell peppers. And I guess I better put one and a half cups of water on there and start boiling it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's what I ought to do. And six cups of white wine vinegar. I got this, I couldn't find exactly the right size. So I got this stuff. I will have vinegar from now till the day the whatever. You can wash your hair in it. Oh, I've already washed everything in my car in it. This thing has rolled from one end of my car to the other, all the way over here and back. So I guess I go ahead and put that in first. It isn't going to boil out, is it? No. I don't reckon it will. So I'm going to, I'll do it. I have six cups of white vinegar. Oh, how humiliating. Well, can you believe that? Now, they've done this stuff to sealed this. Sealed for your protection. It, and it says it right there, right on uh -huh. top. It says sealed for your protection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know when someone's going to accidentally drink 20 gallons of vinegar. All right, there's one. Whoa, there's two. There's three. There's four. And there's There's a lot of five. sugar and vinegar in these dishes that we're Six. doing here. See, I had to get a big container. Look, I took half of it. Took almost half of it. Put that in there. What in the world do you reckon that one and a half cups of, oh, it isn't water, it's sugar, all right. I'm gonna go on ahead and put that in there too while I'm at it. And Larry's right, you could, if you were uh, a mind to, and you had the equipment at home, you could chop up all this stuff a lot faster in your food processor. Kaboom but, but, you know, our grandmothers didn't have food processors, and you can do, that's true. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? You know, yeah, I think yeah. we're going to have to put a mic on Jim today. He's uh -huh. so hysterical. All right. <laughs> and a muzzle on this. <laughs> I, I don't know what to do first. I guess I'll just go on ahead and chop up these. I'm just going to keep chopping until I can't chop no more. So I know you're all going to get bored with this. Nothing I can do about it. Oh, I don't even have it turned on. Here I am stirring to beat Dixie, and I hadn't even turned it thing on yet. Now, get that heated Ooh, up. Something stinks. Can you smell that? There's an unpleasant odor. No, no offense, no, but there I, is. I, I, I don't smell anything at all. 
Anyway, I'm going to chop that up. Finely chopped onions and finely chopped rub. It couldn't be coarsely chopped, of course. It would have to be finely chopped. So mm -hmm. we're going to be chopping and chopping, and that's it. And, and now I'm just going to chop for a while. Well, I'm going to add some minced garlic to this uh, pan of stuff. I've got my apples in there in the uh, hot boiling in the fiery vinegar. And I'm using apple cider vinegar, not white vinegar, uh, because this is an apple chutney. And of course, you know. What, what is the literal meaning of chutney while we're talking? Relish. Oh, is that it? It's just Rel a relish. It's just uh -huh. a relish. What, what is the, the, uh, uh, the root of that word? It's from whence does it emanate? Uh, from Latin. Latin? Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> give me a break. Even. Yeah. It comes from the Latin uh, Chuticus, <laughs> who was a... Didn't he used to rule the yeah, Senate he was during a Roman, Roman cook. times? No, he was a Roman cook. He was, very, he was a favorite of Caligula and all that. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were working our way around to that. <laughs> he, yeah, he used to go in and they'd chop up stuff and uh -huh. preserve it. Wasn't he state. from Cheops? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, anyway, that's, that's Cheops anyway. Now, <sighs> you, you one, your... I just wanted to now, one, I've done one thus far. Right, well, I've got my, oh, I'm moving along. I've crystal. got my garlic down in here now. I now, I've got to have a, a lemon, and this is a wild thing here. I figure the spring auction's going to be on by the time I get this all chopped up. Now, with my lemon, this is a little on you. You want to get your seeds out of it. Why is that? Because you're going to chop it up here in a minute. Oh, I almost did my finger. And if finger you could find a, 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 a seeded uh, or a seedless lemon, you'd be better off. And you're going to chop this whole lemon up. One and a half. I wish I was a fast chopper, but I'm not. And you know, it's doggone many people depend on me for a livelihood that I'm afraid I'll cut myself severely and, well, be out of commission for a while. You know, Johnson and I just run from job to job. Uh-huh. How are you doing down there at that car wash? <laughs> <laughs> well, the weather hadn't been too good and the tips have been worse. I know. Two. I now have two of these. You may want to look at the startling overhead shots. You may as well see what I'm doing. Look at that. Isn't that a mess? And I'm just throwing these, uh, these lemons in as fast as I can. It is a mountain of, of uh, pepper. And soon we're going to get to the pretty part because we've got some big red ones over here. I'm going to be doing those. I, I have come red. across the most gorgeous crop of red peppers. Aren't they beautiful? They really are. They're huge. They really took several people to carry these out of the store yesterday. But do they have a good flavor? And it took at least two people to carry me out of the store. Yes, I know, but that's because you got in the Muscatel over in the <laughs> wine department. I swear, this... this Lemon had all the seeds in one end. <clears throat> now I got to tell you that back in old timey days, they would have stood around telling stories, like sort of like we're doing, and now. they would have been a little more entertaining. <laughs> well, I don't. Did you did did you can a lot of stuff? I know you did at your farm. Oh, well, when you, you know were a kid. we did. As a matter of fact, I'm still using stuff from our basement, our old basement, from ten years ago. That's true, literally ten years ago. We used to can all during the summer, and then at the end of the garden, you'd go out and pick everything in sight. And you'd put that all together in a soup mix, which in the wintertime you'd open up and add beef stock to, and I've still got about 15 jars of that. And uh, yes, indeed, we did a lot of canning. And uh, Peaches in the springtime, that was oh, awful. In my family, everybody got into the peach peeling business. And then, of course, we boiled apple butter in the fall, and that was an even worse mess because everybody, grandma, great-grandma, and her grandma would come down and be cutting them things up. You'd have apples everywhere. Ooh, there's a great big lemon seed. I remember one time, I got a picture of it too, Laban, I ought to bring it in. This is a true story. One time when I was just a child, they was doing apple butter in my backyard, and I was bored. And I threw a great big stone up into the air and looked up and watched it come down, and it cracked me right here. I got a picture of it. It's true. 
like a big old Band-Aid about as big as this pepper on my head for a long time. <laughs> How are we doing? <laughs> uh, oh, no. All right, now I've got to have in here uh, two and a quarter cups of brown sugar, and this is, what is this, Doris? Is this a half a cup? Yeah, it's a half. Well, I want everybody to see I'm throwing the first load in here. Boy, that's a pile of it, isn't it? Look at that. Woo-wee! I'm going to be a little faster on the other. One cup. I'm going to put some more in there and go put some onions in Two there, cup. too. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? You've got to boil that stuff. I don't know why it's so slow here. Oh, there we go. Now boil that and that sugar and, and that vinegar. And we're going to put a little canning salt in there right now. This is, this is canning pickling salt. And you want it, and that's important to use that. Yes, and you got to put two tablespoons in there. Two tablespoons. One, two. Put that in there. Now I put Stir two and around. a quarter cups of brown sugar in mine. Larry, what is pickling salt? It is non-iodized. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's all I could figure out. All right. It doesn't have uh, the the chemical that they put in salt to make it pour freely will discolor something. So the canning and pickling salt is real glumpy. It doesn't pour too well, but it won't turn anything brown. Now I'm going to put in a cup and a half of raisins into mine. That's about a half a cup. Now I know a lot of you are worried out there. You're saying, well, these guys are never going to get this done. And you're right. Good grief, look. Here's a piece of the, of the, look, of the grape stalk. Well, I'll swear. But now, you know, if you're making this relish and this chutney and all this stuff, in it, we're not going to taste it immediately anyway. You got to put it in jars for a while, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. And then we're going to report back to you in a couple of years on how good it is once we get it off the ship. Now, the next thing that's going in mine is a whole little, oh no. A whole, a whole little, no. It's a whole little jar of preserved ginger. Ooh. So this is ginger root. That was sealed for our protection too. This is ginger root that's been peeled and candied. So it's crystallized gin ginger. A very lovely gonna, ginger root. And you're going to put it down in here too. And the root sisters. <laughs> what does it mean? I don't know. Just trying to amuse myself. I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you, I'm a little bored. Well, I don't know why. You're learning so much. Could I have the salt? What am I learning? What have I learned? Well, you've learned the difference in the... Uh, various kinds of salt. Two. <laughs> Old fashioned way, ladies and gentlemen. Two teaspoons of This is why people salt. used to never be bored. They never got finished cooking anything. Work on this stuff for six months. You get to know all your neighbors. People come over for miles around. Working on pepper number two now. And now here is a quarter teaspoon of red pepper. Uh oh. Is that going to be a hot type of a chutney? Or? I would say so. Yeah. With this much red pepper. I tell you, my Aunt Adelaide just got me some, some chow chow recently, and I haven't opened that up, but it sure does look pretty. And she made that from her garden <laughs> from last fall. I tell you, you can make up a lot of things if you have a garden. You really can. <sighs> now, this recipe is done when the apples and the raisins are tender, so it won't have to cook very long. And, oh, the jug's in the way. Oh, all right. Swear. And so here are, mine is, now over here in this pan, this is real important. We've got our jars are in here and they are boiling, fiery hot. All right. And that's important. I'm putting this in now. I say I'm putting, here we, I'm putting the, the red pepper in to it at this point. Woo. And now I'm going to chop up six cups, that's an awful lot, of finely chopped onions. I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to work on that right now. And we're bringing this stuff to a boil. And we'll show you what we do with it in a couple of minutes. Back to Laban. Well, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. Now, I'm just glad to get rid of it. Here is my uh, chutney, and it, it's looking real good. Now, these apples could have been, I guess, cut up a little bit finer, but that's Plenty good. Oh, that's pretty. It As a matter of fact, I could even use some more apples in it. So let me go ahead and put some in, and in a minute or two, we'll go over to the cannon part. These are the famous, nay, notorious Granny Smith apples, and they're real good in this 
kind of dish because they are a very firm, tart cooking apple and they won't fall all apart. Let's see what's on these recipes, why don't we? While we got ourselves a couple of seconds here. All right. Uh -huh. All right, there's the apple chutney. Five cups of chopped apples, peeled, of course, and cored. Two cloves of garlic that have been minced, a lemon that is seeded, and then the whole lemon is chopped up, including the peel. Uh, two and a quarter cups of brown sugar and one and a half cups of raisins. Three ounces of chopped candied ginger. Two uh, tablespoons of salt. I think there should be teaspoons. It is Whoops. a quarter uh, teaspoon of red pepper. Now that's real hot. And two cups of cider vinegar. And the pickles, peppers, and onions. <laughs> if you can't figure it out from the title, you got a problem. Six cups of finely chopped onions. Well, we're working on that right now. Three cups of finely chopped red bell peppers. Three cups of finely chopped green bell peppers. One and a half cups of sugar. Six cups of white, wi white vinegar. And two tablespoons of canning or pickling salt. Now, here's what let's do. Let's pretend like this has been boiling for 30 minutes on top of the stove. What happens is you boil it gently for 30 minutes, reduce the volume by one half. In other words, that will cook down. And then you will fill sterile jars to one half inch top and seal. And what you'll do is you'll process that once you get the lid on it. Yeah. I, I brought one of these. Well, you got one too. Yeah, I've got one too. And they really need to be hot so they don't break on you and so that they are real sterile. How much juice do you put in this? Do we have any idea about that? Just, I'd fill it up, uh, you know, put, put your, your ingredients. I tell you, the best thing to do is take a cup. That's what they used to do back home on the farm. You don't want a disproportionate amount of juice in it, though, okay? Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep it, there you go, about a half inch right to the top. Now that is very, very pretty and very colorful and very lovely. And uh, you put the top on that and boil it. Let me borrow for 10 your minutes. Cup. Here's my cup. And then Eww. whenever it's all, I don't know, I guess you could just take it out whenever you feel like it needed. It's just wonderful. It's ready to, ready to eat. Right? Yeah, and matter. we're going to explain about processing this stuff before we go. You do need to get plenty of your uh, juice in there. Now, down in here I've got a here is a top. Whew. Where is that lid? Where where those lids go, Bly? Quick, underneath of you. No, that's not it. I don't know where they are. I haven't seen them. Here it is. Well, this certainly is real pretty. This pickled peppers and onions. Well, I sure would like to get out the lid. <laughs> the continuing Woo! episode of Where's the Lid, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I know it's <laughs> down in here. That's very lovely. Put these in little attractive jars. You can put them in big jars, little jars. There and it of course is. Come the, here, you. Normally, you would, you would cook that down for 30 right, minutes now. so it's a little fuller. All right, what you got? There's the lid. He's putting the lid on. Put a lid on it. And you want to put your uh, ring on it here and tighten it up. And now we're going to put it back down into hot water. And we're going to boil that for 10 minutes. Same thing with this, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing with this, 10 minutes, boiling with the top on it. Very right. important that you have and, the top uh, on And both of these need to be processed in a hot water bath for at least 10 minutes. Wouldn't hurt to go 15. And then after they're completely done, you will take them out and put them here. And then it's always good to cover them up with a tea towel, preferably one you bought at Jewel Tea. Now are these <laughs> are these gonna are these gonna seal? Do they pop and they when will they seal? Pop when yeah, they they seal. Just like you'll that. hear that the, and the you know you hot got water it. bath will force all of the air and the badness out of the uh, thing, and that's what makes it safe. Now let us repeat: you can only do this with this kind of recipe where you got a lot of sugar and a lot of acid, a lot of vinegar. If you try to do it with anything else, you're liable to get bad food and die of botulism. Oh my heavens! How well, terrible. I, it's, it's I don't a, think I'm willing to give my life for culinary expeditions. But anyway, that's possible, and I just tell you about it. Just be real careful. We don't want anybody to die. Well, I tell you, I'm cooking this stuff down, and it's got a good ways to go, but it already tastes right good. Mm. It really and does. And this is this fabulous, is too. Real tart and real mm. nice. Mm. That's about it. We're going to have to get out of here. Thank you we'll very much. We'll see you soon. Bye.